Hi, Deb McIntosh here, and welcome to Community Connections. We're down at the Castlegar Community Gardens, and we're talking everything that blooms. I'm here today at Castlegar Community Gardens with the Communities in Bloom judges, Berta and Larry. Welcome to Castlegar. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Very, very nice to be here. Well, judging. <clears throat> Sounds a little judgy, but what are you looking for? <laughs> We're looking for a community that blooms, and blooms meaning it is vibrant, it is uh, connected, it is uh, beautiful, of course, but uh, a great place to live, work, and play. All the elements that it takes to create a great community. Yeah, lots of community involvement is one of the aspects that we check for, and we've certainly seen a lot of that here. So one of the things that people say is, well, it's just about the flowers. Mm -hmm. How many flowers can you put out? How do you judge people on flowers? But it's way more than that, isn't it? it Infrastructure, um, being clean and green, all of that stuff plays into it. We actually judge it under uh, six uh, criteria, and the criteria is general appearance, but it's also environment, especially important in uh, these days of climate change and trying to mitigate uh, that. It's uh, heritage, both the natural heritage and uh, the built heritage. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the uh, forest cover, uh, so the trees that are planted as well as the natural trees that you have and then plants come in there as well and general landscape and landscape isn't just uh, your landscape plan in your backyard it's the overall landscape of the city and then broken down into uh, everything from the, the chairs you create to to uh, the, how the parks are planned out to, to serve the community and flora the plants and floral displays natural plants uh, native plants bee gardens, all those things, which is kind of what everybody thinks it is, but it's a lot more. And we're learning here the butterfly ways, which is very yeah. specific to that. So that's exciting because that's been a bit of a change in, in uh, cultural focus all over, mm -hmm. is to be, get to the more the natives and so on, so that our, our plant and floral beds serve uh, a wider base than just uh, being pretty. Right. So, so that's interesting. So you guys judge communities, you go around and you look at things, but you're really what you're doing is instilling education in, into communities on what can be done a little differently or perhaps um, best practices somewhere else. And it's really about enhancing communities through, through an outside eye looking in just to see the things that we don't see. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the value of it. We come in for just uh, a day, day and a half, and uh, what we see, and uh, we, we put that back, and it can be useful to the community because you get used to what's around you, and uh, you don't start looking at new ideas and so on. So uh, uh, you're exactly right. It's, it's just set a second set of eyes for a couple of days, and uh, we try to be as uh, careful in what we see and what we recommend and what we uh, can applaud you for. Yeah. And one of the things I've always enjoyed is being able to go into a community and say, hey, that particular thing is really special, and have the community members say, what, really? So we can identify things that sometimes just get taken for granted. That's right. The grass isn't always greener on the other side, is yeah. it? Yeah. yeah, we always say people come here from all over the world and spends thousands of dollars to spend time in our area. And this, with Communities in Bloom, teaches us to appreciate what we have, look for things that we haven't seen, and just, you know, bring community together to make it much better and, um, yeah, livability much better as well. So often we don't recognize the diamonds in our own backyard, and uh, this is one way to do that, just to do a little bit of uh, uh, introspection on what is very special about your community. And one of the things that I've always appreciated is the grass is always greener where it's watered. Ah. <laughs> right? So yeah. let's take care of what we have. Hear that, Castlegar? Well, that's very yeah. metaphorical too, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, I, and I think over the years the hard work that Communities of Bloom has put in has really resonated with people because we see a little bit more in the yards, a little bit more of cleaning sidewalks, and people just taking individual pride and um, really celebrating the fact that, that we can be on a national stage, which isn't something that everyone can do. 
um, you know, without a lot of work previous, um, uh, you know, years of hard work and, and good leaders and a willing council to partner. Well, it goes back to a gathering last night and just look around the room, the way people work together, uh, collaborating between groups and individuals and uh, making dreams come true. Yeah. So it comes back to the people and uh, what they're looking for to, to do something that's going to serve the entire community. And it's always nice to have a champion or two around and support those champions and help them lead the rest of the organizations. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I want to thank you both for planting seeds in Castlegar about future well potential and other things to come. I wish you well on the rest of your tour and to your next city that you're going to. And we can't say enough how much we appreciate the time and effort that you folks put in being judges. So thank you. It's been a great pleasure being in Castlegar. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Thank you. I'm pleased to be here with Darlene Koloski, Lead of Communities in Bloom, and Chris Barlow, the, the uh, CAO of the City of Castlegar. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, Deb. Darlene. Hi, Deb. Good morning. Well, what a big day it is for the city and you, Darlene. A lot riding on this. A super, super great day for the city. Uh, we're happy to have judges here, uh, international judges uh, in our community. And, uh, you know, we all love Castle Gar so much. We want to keep them here for a week at least to show them more than what we can. Uh, we're very limited to a one day, uh, day and a half uh, time frame with them. And uh, so we're trying to hit the high points of our community. And this community garden here today is an amazing new opportunity for Castle Gar. So we're really happy to be here today. Yeah, the, the, the garden is very nice, so inclusive of everyone, and it just sort of um, says what community should be about, exactly. you know. Yeah. Chris, you've been a, a strong proponent of Communities in Bloom, Absolutely. and uh, the city has partnered with them from its inception. Where do you see the benefit? Uh, well, the benefit is, I think, the biggest thing is community pride. Uh, we've seen that grown just in what we're seeing, uh, how the city's flourishing, but how people feel about their city. And that's extremely important. And I think some of the, the projects that Communities in Bloom have championed has really shown their value through, uh, through COVID. When people weren't necessarily able to go out and do what they wanted to usually do, they were able to go out into the community, go out into nature, and really benefit from, from a lot of the projects that uh, the city and Communities in Bloom have partnered on. Yeah. And Darlene, I have a serious question for you. What the heck keeps you going? <laughs> well, you know, I think the love for our community and, uh, you know, the volunteers that we have in our community are incredible. And I can't give enough credit to them. I think just simply, Deb, this, I love Castlegar and I want to see that uh, people enjoy living here. They're happy here and they're going to bring their families and raise them here. And I think that, to me, is uh, all a big part of the puzzle like we have tourism is so important to our region housing is so important to our region and the judges are not just looking at the flowers they're looking at the whole picture of what our city is about like Chris's position the the public works staff's position the all of the different things that are in making Castlegar what it is today and that's what keeps me going because I think it's so important that we have a community that people want to come and live and love to live in. Yeah. Uh, Darlene, you're a business person as well. What does it mean to the businesses of Castlegar to have this kind of development and pride? Do you think it? Do you think it's something that they bring in and then they they put back out? Well, I I think yes. As a business person, I see like all of the businesses that I that our community has been involved with our businesses and those that support the program it's there's really showing a sincere interest in our community about actually making it a livable community and i think to me um, it's about economic development it's about having people come here and preparing our community for people to be able to live here it's extremely important from a business perspective as you probably know yourself if you don't have people living here and happy to live here then you're not going to have a very successful business and that's simply what it's what i see as being a, a super big connection and as many businesses as communities in bloom can get involved in the program which we do have a lot and it's incredible that they can be a part of us and they can give back to our community well i can't begin to tell you how much i appreciate both of you leaders in the community for leading the way and showing us a better way of living a better way of learning and instilling knowledge into us that we can pass along as well so thank you very much from everyone in castlegar for, for such tremendous leadership
Well, we're, we're happy to, you know, like I want to just say one final thing. We have the total support of the city of Castlegar in this endeavor, and that's incredibly important to all of us. Uh, you know, volunteerism is about choosing where you want to put your time. And as you know, uh, it's important to have being, a, you know, having a, a volunteer recognized for what they're doing. And this program is an ability for them to have that happen. Yeah, and I would just close out on, on saying, too, that the city couldn't do half of these things without the volunteers and it's amazing what they do for our community and and uh it's we just can't thank them enough great and deb thank you too for what you do for our community you do a great job and many things that you do as well so thank you well thank you i love councillor as well and together we can we can make things happen and let's rock. yes let's rock and thank you guys again too like i said You're to the welcome. judges for planting really good healthy seeds in the community to for all of us to carry forward absolutely thank you so much Thank, Thank you. you. Christina. Thank you. Next up is David Greaves. He is the president of the Kootenai Food Strategy. David, welcome. Hello. So the judges were here. They were looking around. You gave your spiel about what's happening. Tell us a little bit about the community garden and why it's important to Castlegar. Well, the community garden uh, brings together lots of people in the community of Castlegar, uh, including students, seniors, um, families and uh, you know people with uh, less privileges than most. So down here at the garden we endeavor to give everybody an opportunity to come together, uh, share knowledge about uh, growing plants um, and also increasing food security. David, look at Deb when you're talking. Sorry. I'm, I'm used to looking at dance. the camera. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So you, um, your organization has partnered with the city, so you lease the land and they're helping with a few things. And um, you have big plans for this place. Like y you don't, I mean, you guys have increased it immensely, but what's next on the agenda? Well, right now we are completing uh, the project associated with the Columbia Basin Trust Grant that we had through the Food Access and Recovery Stream. Um, ultimately, we're completing those beds, so 25 community garden beds will be installed, uh, and then we will move on to installing a vermicomposting system that involves worms, like uh, red wiggler composter worms, uh, and black soldier fly larvae, um, in order to help close the loop and reduce uh, our waste input, and increase our waste recovery, of course. Right. Sounds interesting, but ooh. <laughs> There's a lot that goes into it, and it's not just it's not just sticking plants in dirt. There's an education piece behind it, and when people come and rent a bed or want to do something with, if you want to do something with the school kids, is there is there a more educational component behind what you're doing here? Uh, certainly. So we often have people down uh, teaching about bees and pollinators, uh, different insect populations that help and coincide with gardens, also pest populations. Um, and previously we've also hosted workshops and events uh, for, for sharing uh, in knowledge and, and skills in terms of how to grow and how to most effectively use your land base. Um, here is a really interesting example uh, because we had potential contamination risks for this site. Um, we've endeavored to develop a way that br previously thought brown uh, locations could then all still be utilized to grow food. Right. So there's there's a lot more to it than just sticking in a tomato plant. That's wonderful. Well, I think you're an asset to the community. I think your partnerships with the food bank, with Iris, with other organizations is tremendous. It, and it uh, sometimes takes one cog in the wheel to pull everybody together. And uh, thank you for doing that. Thank you for all your groups do down here. And uh, I hope you have a very fruitful growing season. Thanks very much. But just to note, I'm only yet one cog in that wheel. There's many other pertinent ones that uh, I couldn't do any of this without. So, Sign of a good leader, <laughs> mentioning other people. That's good. Thank you, David, and, uh, and good luck with you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. If you or you know somebody that has an interesting idea or a program or an organization out there that would like to be interviewed and share your very worthwhile ideas, give us a call. The information is on the bottom of your screen and uh, reach out. This is your community. Let's have some fun. Mm -hmm.